Hello and welcome to the special project by Ukraine Crisis Media Center, Euro-Atlantic Course and Analytical Center UCU dedicated to Russia-Ukraine war, Ukraine on fire. Meeting of the EU leaders in France on March 10 ruled out fulfilling Ukraine's demand for a fast-track integration with the bloc as they discussed ways to help the country that's been invaded by Russia. At the same time, while EU member states have been fully united back in Ukraine's resistance, leaders are divided on how fast the bloc could move to accept Ukraine as member and how swiftly the EU could cut energy ties with Moscow. Natalia Forsuk, Director General of the Government Office for Coordination of European and Euro-Atlantic Integration, in her comment for our project, underlined that Ukraine is very grateful to our European partners for recognizing it as part of European family. But after this, we need quick and efficient procedure for our country to become a EU member. Hello, dear colleagues, friends and partners. Today is the 19th day of war and uh, you know that the uh, red line of this war has moved to the border with the EU, to the Polish border. Yesterday we had 35 people killed uh, and 134 wounded 20 kilometers to Polish border by Russian missiles. So it's very clear that uh, this threat is not only uh, threat to Ukraine but also a very clear sig signal to EU that uh, Russia is ready to expand. So in these circumstances, of course, our application for the membership is in EU uh, has extreme importance for us. You know that the president, our president has signed an application and after that, a few days ago at Versailles meeting, EU member states confirmed and stated that Ukraine belongs to European family. For us, it's very important and strong signal, but uh, this signal also requires some uh, efficient and uh, short procedures uh, to move on with uh, our membership. All the preparation uh, work is done. Uh, we believe that both parties have a very good understanding where we, where we are with the implementation of our association agreement. The association agreement is very comprehensive between Ukraine and EU. And last year we have released and presented our five-year reports on uh, achievements of, in implementation of the association agreement. This year we have prepared and it's ready to release the report on implementation of the association agreement in 2021. Uh, according to the pulse of the agreement, our level of implementation was 63% on 1st of January 2022. And um, um, that gives us enough of uh, information uh, to the both parties uh, to have a very good understanding where we are. Also, parties last year exchanged the assessments of the association agreement implementation and we have done a very important mapping exercise, checking on our positions, where they are common and where they are not common in our assessments on the implementation. We saw that... Uh, 90% of our position are the same. We have common understanding. And uh, just before the war, we were working last few days on the draft of the joint assessment. So all the preparation work uh, for uh, the procedure is done uh, in terms of clarifying where we are. Both parties know this well, very well. The data are there, information is there, and uh, parties... Um, know this know this uh, very well so now what we expect from the european commission is to uh, not being bureaucratic even if uh, in the normal times bureaucracy is positive because it's giving you a lot of possibilities to collect data and so on and so forth but in these extreme conditions we expect that procedure um, on uh, uh, evaluating uh, our application will be very short and uh, very efficient based on the data provided, as I mentioned before. Everything is there. 
so far we have not received yet uh, from the Commission or the delegation uh, the roadmap of next steps, uh, what should be done. But we believe that today or tomorrow we will have this uh, roadmap and that uh, this roadmap will be based on the real condition and uh, uh, the situations uh, that we are facing with the limited access to uh, databases, limited access to internet, limited access to human resources. Uh, so we really uh, hope and believe that the EU is strong enough in uh, its position that Ukraine belongs to you, uh, to the family, to the EU family, and uh, now there will be a very short path on what needs to be done to be accepted um, as a member state of EU. Uh, ending this. Um, I would like to say that uh, our hope is that the decision could be done by the end of March uh, by the European Commission and um, probably member state because every day of delay costs us hundreds and thousands life and this is the price to pay for bureaucracy which uh, is not normal in uh, peaceful times but this is the price in the time where we live. Thank you. Despite the fact that there are still many skeptics in Europe about Ukraine's access to the EU, many members of European Parliament believe that Ukraine will only make the European Union stronger. Andreas Kubilius emphasizes that European voters support Ukraine's membership in EU very much today, so the procedure of accepting Ukraine should be as short as possible. Let's listen to his comment. Brothers and sisters Ukrainians, Let's talk today about uh, Ukraine membership in EU. Definitely, uh, you are showing such a will uh, to defend your country, to defend your choice to live with Ukra European values that I can declare in a very simple way. You are the strongest European nation. And uh, it would be big benefit for European Union itself to have you as a member of our family, formal member of the family, because you will make uh, European Union much stronger. Now let's talk a little bit about the process and procedures. As you know, the last uh, uh, Friday, early in the morning, European Council uh, uh, started formal procedure, which uh, first of all will go uh, to uh, uh, decision on your candidate status. Uh, despite the fact that uh, some uh, leaders of uh, European governments, including Netherlands Prime Minister Rutte, was uh, skeptical on uh, uh, such a perspective. He was saying that Commission would, uh, should uh, make, you know, quite a long investigation. Uh, he was speaking even about years. I would uh, uh, say that it would be a really big mistake and I hope that Commission, despite what some Prime Ministers uh, were saying, will do what uh, they need to do, what is their obligation, what they can do to make evaluation and, co and, and, and to make uh, conclusions, positive conclusions on your candidate status uh, very soon. Because that is what uh, I have heard from uh, Commission President Ursula von der Leyen who before the council meeting uh, a few weeks ago, after the war started, uh, Ursula von der Leyen was very clear in her language that uh, uh, Ukraine is one of us and we want them in the European Union. So I hope that those words of Ursula von der Leyen will be uh, made uh, you know, a reality and that Commission will do its best uh, uh, to give a positive, you know, evaluation of, uh, to give you candidate status and then the Council will, with all the Prime Ministers and also European Parliament, I hope, also will vote in favour. Second, uh, uh, procedures of your integration uh, towards EU. How to make them much more fast than, uh, you know, usually they are. And usually they take, uh, you know, for us, for example, for Lithuania, 
uh, when we became members of EU, so it took for us something like nine years. We made a formal application to become members of EU, like President Zelensky did uh, a few weeks ago. We made it in 1995, and we became members of EU only in 2004, so it took nine years. But there are, uh, there are some examples or, or some, you know, some uh, possibilities when some countries or some territories became member of EU in a much more rapid way. Eastern Germany, uh, back in 1990, after Berlin Wall collapsed in November of 1989, uh, became uh, part of European Union in uh, October of 1990. Of course, they did it through reunification with Western Germany. They took all the uh, Western German laws, uh, their laws, and that was the way how they became members of EU. So I would say, uh, if in a short way, I would say that th this was a philosophy when the country, first of all, became formal member of EU, and then the country integrated itself to, you know, to the uh, key community, to all the, you know, requirements of EU. And this is, you know, uh, an experience which we need to remember now. Because uh, if Eastern Germany, you know, first of all became member of EU and only then integrated itself and then learned how to live with, with all the EU legislation, with German legislation, other countries, including Lithuania, we, first of all, were going through adopting of all the legislation, and only at the end, we were getting, you know, formal license, uh, formal membership in EU. Uh, I think that, you know, we need to make uh, good discussion among ourselves, first of all, in, inside of EU, um, uh, about possibility to change philosophy of today, of enlargement, into philosophy of what I call, you know, Eastern Germany. And... Uh, European leaders should remember that their voters are very much in favor of Ukraine becoming member of EU. The recent uh, opinion polls which were done by one French company together with Ukrainians have shown that in France, uh, you know, up to 62% of all the voters are in favor of Ukraine becoming member of EU. In Germany, it's even more, 69%. And those numbers are much bigger than they were in 2014 after Crimea occupation. So European voters made a decision. Ukraine belongs to European Union, and those formalities should be done as quickly as possible. Leaders of Europe should listen to their voters. And I would say in at the end, Ukraine will win. Slava Ukraine and Geroim Slava. Ivana Klimpushtsensadze, MP and head of the Committee for Integration of Ukraine to European Union, said that if some concerns of EU members can lead them to make a decision about Ukraine's EU membership right now, there should be some solution to give Ukrainian people some guarantees or opportunity to do the next step toward its desire to join the European family. She sent us a very comprehensive and emotional message. Dear friends, Talking about one of the major dreams of the Ukrainian society, uh, returning back to the European family to which we belong, I want to underline that this decision was taken by our people uh, back in 2014, when we stood against, stood up against the regime of Yanukovych, when we took the challenge uh, of Russian first wave of war. Uh, that was waged against Ukraine by annexation of Crimea and uh, occupation of uh, part of the eastern territories of Ukraine. At that particular moment, people of Ukraine have finally clearly decided for themselves that freedom, uh, democracy, human rights, rule of law, those are those things that we cherish, um, that we want to... Uh, further develop in our country and we want to do that along with the societies and countries that have proven um, to be successful in this. Thus, uh, we wanted to join and we still do want to join both NATO and the EU. But I want to focus on EU, on EU membership today. I totally understand that uh, there is no such thing as fast track procedure of uh, any country to join the European Union. I totally understand that um, this procedure and um, the path for any country to join the Union is um, 
written down in um, very clearly in many details, and that foresees a huge amount of work, starting from a wide range of uh, transformative reforms that have to be carried out uh, in the country. Uh, that um, legislation, bulk of uh, European legislation, which is um, difficult in quite a few areas that has to be transmitted into international legislation, that that is about um, quality standards, about security standards, about division of powers, about balance of powers, about uh, independence of institutions, about rule of law, and many, many other things that have to be delivered for the society to be able to join. I also totally understand that from the point of view of uh, uh, Brussels bureaucracy, um, such fast-forwarding, uh, forwarded uh, kind of track of uh, country joining to the EU may seem uh, to be totally impossible, both from legal, from practical level, not to mention from the point of view of the um, political stance of many countries, uh, for example, uh, such countries as um, Germany or like France or like Belgium or the Netherlands or the others. Um, I also very clearly understand that joining the EU uh, by such big country as Ukraine uh, is rather costly endeavor. And I do understand very well that all those uh, Eastern European uh, states that have been joining over the last couple of decades, the Union, um, have been granted a lot of uh, additional financial support, starting from donations, from credits, and ending with a lot of um, investments in those countries. And um, that could be something that is of serious concern for, for those states that uh, would have to take this decision about welcoming Ukraine into their ranks. I also uh, very well understand that um, um, there is also a factor of the population of the country and uh, that uh, Ukraine being one of the biggest countries uh, on the European continent and definitely bigger than any other uh, country joining over the last couple of uh, decades um, have, has this huge population that will impact the level of representation uh, in the European uh, Parliament. Also, I understand that it also will have impact on the uh, on such indicator as this coefficient of uh, um, of the voices and votes um, while taking the decisions in the European countries, because there Ukraine would be probably like for fourth or uh, fifth state uh, in. Europe. Um, I also understand that Ukraine joining the EU at, at some special procedure would also impact and maybe even to an extent to be harmful to some of the processes that have been started um, in the Western Balkans uh, for the countries that have been already on different stages of uh, their um, negotiations with regard to joining the European Union. But there are two main factors that have to be taken into account from my perspective. If the European Union is really a union about values, as it claims to be, if the European Union really wants to remain the forepost of democracy as it presents itself to the world, then the European Union has to take this important decision of letting Ukraine into the European family. Moreover, the second thing is that if the European Union is real representative democracy, then it has to be um, be guided in, the, in its decisions by the will of its uh, societies. And what we see right now that 70% of the societies across European Union are in favor of Ukraine joining the um, the EU. 
Uh, that means that in Poland, uh, the numbers are as high as 92% for Ukraine being let into the EU, uh, 71% in Italy, uh, 68% in, in Germany, already 62% in France. I think the leaders of these countries uh, have to take into account what their citizens uh, think with regard to, to Ukraine and the further and our further fate as a country and as a democracy and um, as a participant of the union. And if the politicians across the EU think that uh, concerns are of such importance that they cannot take the decision on granting us the EU membership at this particular moment, I think in this unprecedented times, uh, there always can be a creative solution found to provide Ukrainians with a um, glimpse of the future, uh, with a breath of fresh air in these dire times for our nation. For example, something that could be considered as a first step on our European integration, uh, that could be the suggestion that is coming from member of the European Parliament, Andrius Kubilius, where he's speaking about possible economic, full economic integration of Ukraine without political vote at this particular moment. Um, that's definitely not something that Ukrainian people would like to see, but that could be a good step forward in, um, in the promise of Europe to integrate the nation that um, every single day uh, is by example and by real actions is proving that it is standing on um, European values and that it is defending European values as such. And um, kind of finalizing, I'd like to say that the issue of giving Ukraine candidate status is definitely something that is not um, written clearly in any of the bureaucratic documents of the EU. So what it takes, it takes real political will to deliver on that decision and open up the possibilities of additional transformation for Ukraine. So with um, the political support that was received by Ukraine from the European Parliament, um, calling on the nations of um, Europe to consider um, welcoming Ukraine in the EU. With the next step, definitely not ideal step of the uh, of the summit in Versailles, informal European Council meeting in Versailles, um, that said that Ukraine is a European nation. Definitely, we are nothing else but a European nation, a real European nation. I think right now the European Commission can work very promptly on the on the brief document that is required to lay the way for the Council to take the final decision and grant Ukraine a candidate stat status. All it requires again, it requires um, courage, openness and uh, clarity of the uh, of the vision for the future and i think that this is something that ukrainian nation definitely deserves and that should be delivered by the uh, eu leaders um, ukrainians by fighting the war are hoping that our partners that have been with us over this difficult uh, more than eight years of the war um, which was carried out by Russia on a smaller scale, will move forward. We already see the tectonic changes in your in your um, societies. We already see the tectonic changes in your policies towards Ukraine. So one additional step is definitely a possibility. Because if Ukraine won't be let in um, in this unprecedented uh, difficult times, I think that would mean that um, there is an end to the EU as we know it. But I'm sure that the EU wants to come out from this challenge that it is going through together uh, with Ukraine much stronger, much more powerful and uh, much more appealing 
to other nations in the world. I believe in in wisdom, I believe in vision, and I want to call on leadership that is right now, unfortunately, a bit lacking among the European nations. Thank you. So, French President Emmanuel Macron said that EU must send a strong signal to support of Ukraine, but ruled out the possibility for the country to join the bloc anytime soon. So, we've got a signal and we appreciate it, and we hope that EU will appreciate our fighting for European values at the cost of Ukrainians' lives. In the description to this video, you can find the information how personally you can help Ukraine against Russian aggression. If you find our job useful, please like and share this video. Everything is gonna be Ukraine.